In this video, we're going to find a power series representation for the, the, the algebraic expression 1 over 1 minus x squared. Uh, now, in this situation, we have a repeated factor in the denominator. So there's a linear factor, 1 minus x, but it shows up twice. And it turns out you can connect this rational function with this rational function by taking derivatives. Notice if f of x, whoops, if, if f of x is 1 over 1 minus x, then its derivative, by the usual rules here, I, I can actually use a sort of a chain rule thing if I think of this thing as 1 minus x to the negative 1 power. Then by the chain rule, this derivative will look like negative 1 times 1 minus x to the negative 2 times the inner derivative, which is negative 1. And so we get a 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. So this builds the connection that we were trying to say here, that if we take this function here to be f of x, this function right here is just f prime of x. Why is that significant? Well, the function f, we know, we, we actually have a power series representation for it, right? So f of x, which looks like 1 over 1 minus x, its power series representation is the standard geometric series, the sum where n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And in expanded form, this would be 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. So this is a power series representation for f of x. If I want to find a power series representation for f prime, that, it, that is, if I want to take the derivative of the function, I can just take the derivative of the power series, which we've seen before. You'll take the derivative of 1, which is, a, which is constant, which is go to 0. Derivative of x is a 1. We get a 2x. We'll get a 3x squared. We'll get a 4x cubed. Just the use of the power rule right here. And so in general form, using the general form here, we're going to get that the power series representation is going to be the sum where n goes from 0 to infinity. And then we're going to get n plus 1 times x to the n, like so. And so if we write this power series represent if this power series in a general form, we get something like the following. Now, admittedly, you, you could have taken a slightly different approach. Uh, we could start this thing at 1 and go towards infinity, in which case you would get n times x to the n minus 1. That, that's perfectly fine. That looks more like the power rule we get from antiderivative or from derivatives. But in order to make this thing start at 0, we want to shift everything down to 0. And so what that does is if you shift the starting point down by one, all of the ends that you're going to see in the formula are going to get shifted up by once. This is sort of like the standard thing we see with function shifts. Um, you, you know, you have to turn right to go left, like Lightning McQueen knows very well. And so we get the following. And so now we have a power series representation of our function, 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. And we obtain this by taking the derivative. So if we can... If we can find, that, that's to say, if, if the function we're trying to represent as a power series, if it's the derivative of a known power series representation, we can take the derivative to work from there. And I should also mention that the original power series had a radius of convergence of 1, and therefore its derivative will have that same radius of convergence. Uh, this, this power series representation is only valid when x is between negative 1 and 1.